Good morning and happy Sabbath. Get everyone coming in from the back. If you would want to join us for our opening song, page 71, Come Thou Almighty King. We'll sing all four verses. Would you stand with us? and happy Sabbath, Father. Thank you so much for giving us a day to come and fellowship with you, where we can rest and also reflect upon where we have come from and also what you have done for us. Lord, we just want to invite your spirit here into this room, and we ask that you would bless us through this whole worship service. Pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. And welcome to the Piedmont Park Church. Thank you so much for coming, and welcome to all the guests who are visiting. We pray that you are blessed as we continue our worship service. Duane and I are going to sing a hymn for you that's in your hymnal, but I'd be surprised if anybody here has ever sung it in church. It's hymn number 628, and it's, uh, As Jacob with Travel Was Weary. It's a ballad. It tells the story of Jacob that he was fleeing after deceiving his father and cheating his brother out of the father's blessings. He stopped for the night, and he used a stone for a pillow. And then he had a dream of a ladder reaching to heaven. God was merciful to him. The composer of this song draws a parallel to God's mercy to us, symbolized by the death of Jesus on the cross. Duane and I will sing all three verses, and we will invite you to join us in the last refrain after verse 3, and Duane will direct you when it's time for you to join us in singing. But right now, listen to the, this song as Jacob with travel was weary, and the words will be on the screen. As Jacob with travel was weary one day, at night on a stone for a Raised up a ladder of 
How many of you have ever heard the name Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson? Oh, good. They interviewed him this last week on television. He now is in, on the president's cabinet, uh, housing and urban development. And you know what he said? One of the questions they asked him was, you're uh, helping out with this new tax reform. What do you recommend? Oh, my. What an opportunity. You know what he did? Well, he said, if I had my way, we'd go back to the old biblical process of 10%. <laughs> the interviewer kind of, you know, oh. <laughs> and he said, you know, if you made a million, you paid one, 100,000. If you made 100,000, you paid 10. And if you made a dollar, you paid 10 cents. Seems simple enough, doesn't it? <laughs> Guess what? Look in your bulletin. Church expense. Oh, me. Well, shut off the lights, turn off the air conditioner, don't run the heat this winter, and we could save a ton of money. Plus, cut the pastor's salary. <laughs> yeah, that's where a lot of it's going. Folks, it's really this simple. We come here to worship God. We have a beautiful place, and we get some unbelievable, wonderful things like this song we just heard. Yeah? So when the deacons come up here and they bring the plates around, think for a moment. Ten <laughs> percent? I don't know. That's quite a bit. Okay, deacons, let's get ready here. It's time to go. Lord, you've been so good to us, and uh, I know we have taxes and we have all kinds of things that we have to deal with all the time, but right now, Lord, all we're concerned about is making your house of worship a place where people can come and find solace and find a message and find a relationship with you. And so as we give today, make sure this offering is blessed to that use is our prayer in your name. Amen. 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 Let the church family say amen, yes? Amen. Ah, this is a good day. It's always one of my favorite Sabbaths whenever Pastor Michael gets to get wet because that means that someone is giving their heart to the Lord. I'm excited today, church family, to introduce to you Patricia. 
and she has been attending here at Piedmont for quite a while now. But Patricia, I remember the first time you came to Piedmont, and we were visiting there in the foyer and down the hallway as we were getting all the boys to Sabbath school class. And the one thing she shared with me that day is the th same thing she's been sharing with me every day since, where she said, I just want Jesus. I just want the Bible. That's all I want in my life. I want God in my life. And that has been your theme, Patricia, from that moment. And so we're so grateful for how the Lord has brought you. And that day I told you, well, you're in the right place if you want Jesus, because that's what we all want here. Patricia began doing Bible studies with Eula and with Renee, Eula Key and Renee Shecker, going through the Thunder DVDs and studying and learning. And Patricia's already gotten involved in the church, and so we are thrilled with that. And at the conclusion of those studies, she decided that she wanted to be baptized. And so I am thrilled for your decision today, Patricia. And Patricia wanted to share a couple of verses, and I think they are very meaningful and very relevant to all of our lives, but to Patricia as well. She wanted to share with everyone Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 to 16. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted, as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And she also wanted to share today Romans 8, verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who who can be against us? Amen. And Patricia, that's what we celebrate today, that God is for us. He is for you. And that is why we're here today. And so, Patricia, because you love Jesus with all your heart, because you believe that when he hung on the cross, he was there for you and your sins, because you want to follow Jesus all the days of your life, it is my honor and my privilege to now, as a gospel, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to baptize you in the name of the Father who loves you, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, who died for you, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, who will live within you. Amen. Amen. And church family, if you are feeling like Patricia has been feeling, that you want Jesus in your life and you want to study and learn more about Jesus, come and let me know. Let one of the pastors know, one of the elders know. We would be happy to be a part of your journey with God. All right. As they're heading back, just wanted to give a couple brief announcements, and I'm going to start it off by handing the mic over to Carol. While the children are going back to their seats, I just wanted you to open your bulletins to the page that has the picture of Daniel Martinez on it. And at the bottom of that page, it says women's ministry events. And I just wanted to give a brief announcement and give a little more detail on those. The first one is about the Fresh Start Home. It's transitional housing for 24 women. And we take supper there for them every other month and next Sunday the 24th of September is our turn and I need about three more people to help me with the supper so if you can do that see me at the welcome desk after the service or call me my information is in here the friendship home is our shelter for victims of domestic violence in Lincoln and every year they have a campaign called safe quarters and people go out and walk through neighborhoods and ask for funding. This is not a small event. They collected $109,000 last year for safe quarters. I'd love to have a team to go out from Piedmont. We'd leave from here at 1.30 on the 8th of October, but I've got to have you sign up 
before the 25th of September. So I have sign up sheets in the back at the welcome desk. You can see me back there after the service. I'd love to have you be part of my team. The next thing after we get back from the um, Safe Quarters campaign, we have a tea for the women and girls here at the church and Union College is doing pizza for men and boys or anybody else that wants to be included in there. So there'll be something for everybody after that event. Then I'd also like to remind the women that the women's retreat in Grand Island is coming up. Um, Jeanette and Ava will both be there leading out in the craft on Saturday night. You might want to go have fun with them, but you need to register by the, I think it's October the 1st or the 3rd. All of a sudden, my brain went blank. Anyway, the brochures are back at the welcome desk. So again, come back there and find me, and I'll help you get signed up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, coming up tomorrow, the 17th, at 6.30, we will be having the concert here uh, given us uh, by the Lesters and their gospel music group, and they've been doing music for quite some time, actually through about five generations. And doors will be open here at 5.30. It is free, and so it's open to everyone. So bring your family and friends. 6.30 is the starting time, and 5.30 is when the doors will be open so you can come and fill the sanctuary. Also, later today, around 4 p.m., we will be doing the prayer room dedication for um, Darlene Myers. And come, please be a part of it. And just to remind us about how powerful prayer is. She was a woman of prayer, and so we will be... Um, dedicating that at 4 p.m. today and following that at 4.30 in the gathering place room um, straight across from the prayer room, they will be starting their end time study and that will be at 4.30 p.m. And finally, I'd like to turn it over to Pastor Michael. Thank you very much, Pastor Caleb. Here at this church, we celebrate when there's a water baptism, but we also rejoice when there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I'd like to invite Patricia to come and join me up here again. We're going to have a special prayer for her. But before she comes in, he can come too. That's all right. That's all right. He was a little shocked when mom went under the water today. And so he wants to stick close to mom. And that's okay. Uh, I'd like a couple other special people to join me up here as well. Renee and Eula, are you guys here today? All right, yes, come up here. I want to recognize these ladies because Patricia wanted to do Bible studies. And so I spoke to Renee and Eula, and I said, you guys are both, you've got the Thunder DVDs, you're both capable of doing studies, would you like to? And they loved it, they got together, and I think you guys studied, is it once or twice a week sometimes? They went at it because Patricia was hungry for the Word of God. And I want to highlight these ladies' ministry in leading someone to know Jesus and to accept Him and be baptized because that's what it's all about as Christians, is doing what we can. Not everybody does a Bible study, that's true, but doing the things that we do to help someone else know Jesus. And so, Renee and Eula, thank you so much for what you have done. And now, Patricia, we want to, before we pray... We want to give you your baptism certificate, which says that on this day, the 16th of September, that you were baptized in the Piedmont Park Church, and we want to make you an official member as well because we want you to feel like this is your home and you're part of the family. Is there a motion to accept? I see one way in the back. I'm going to take Adam, and there's a second from Stan. Now, Patricia, take a good look. Even look up there at the top. All those in favor, Patricia joining our church family. Amen. Any opposed? Hands down. Very good. Very good. And now, Patricia, we're going to have a prayer for you. And I'd like to invite the elders to come and join us. And Renee and Eula, you guys don't have to leave. Stay on up here. If there's anybody who has gotten connected already with, with Patricia and would like to be a part of this prayer, come and join us up here in the front. But I especially want our elders to come and be a part of this prayer time as we ask the Holy Spirit to come upon Patricia and to be a part of her life. And family, why don't you guys come up here as well? And let's just surround Patricia, and we're going to put our hands on her. And if you can't get a hand on her, 
That's okay. Put your hand on someone who has a hand on her, all right? Church family, would you bow your heads with me as we ask God to do what only he can? Gracious Heavenly Father, we know today you're looking down from heaven and you're smiling at your daughter who has made a decision to continue to follow you all the days of her life. Lord, today you have washed Patricia clean because of your blood that you shed on the cross. Now she has a new robe on, a robe of righteousness, of Christ's righteousness today. So we rejoice with her. And now, Holy Spirit, we ask you to do your part and to fill her full of your grace and your love, to give her, her those spiritual gifts that only come from you, and you decide what those gifts are. Bless her with those gifts of ministry so that she can be used by you to help someone else to know you too. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank you for what you've done so far, and we know you're not done yet with any of us, and especially with Patricia. So we put her in your hands and ask you to surround her with a hedge of protection. Guard and guide her, Lord, and help her to be the woman that you want her to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Patricia, we have some certificates for you, your baptism certificate and your discovery ministry certificate that will help you figure out how God has gifted you and how you can be a part of ministry. So God bless you. Thank you so much. And now, church family, I believe they're already singing in heaven. So why don't we sing with them, shall we? Would you stand as we sing, as we continue our worship with songs of worship, nothing between me and my Savior. We'll sing all three verses of this, and as we finish this, we'll go right into our prayer chorus, preparing us for prayer.
Let's kneel for prayer. Father God in heaven, we just thank you for that sweet peace that you bring to our spirit. Let nothing come between us and Jesus. Father, we praise your name this morning for Patricia and her family. What a joy to see her give her life to Jesus. We know you rejoice with us. Father, we've come this morning to praise you. Let our praise be acceptable in your sight. Bless us this morning with your Holy Spirit. Father, our hearts are also troubled. We've seen so much devastation and disaster in our country, in the islands, earthquakes in Mexico, mudslides in Sierra Leone, and other troubles. Father, I pray that you will be with all of the relief agencies, ADRA, the Red Cross, as they seek to provide the basic needs for people, food, shelter, clothing, water. The sadness, the hopelessness I've seen on faces. Oh, that they could be drawn to Jesus. Oh, that they could see the hope in Jesus that we have. Father, you've told us that these things are gonna happen. They're gonna get worse and more frequent. But for us to lift our eyes because we know that Jesus is coming near, that your coming is so soon. Father, draw our eyes to Jesus. Bless Pastor Michael this morning as he opens your words. Nourish our soul that we may share the love of Jesus with someone else. We thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, your grace and mercy, and for the forgiveness of our sins that we someday soon will live with you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, family. Our uh, scripture reading this morning is in Proverbs 31, verses 10 and 12, 10 through 12. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far more than rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Amen. Thank you, Ava, for reading us God's Word today. R rather fitting, yes, that as the sermon topic is a wise woman, that we have Mrs. White herself read the Scripture reading. <laughs> can, you, can you find a wiser woman amongst the Seventh-day Adventists than that? Well, some of you will remember that last week I began a sermon series on the captivity uh, that we find in the Bible. Uh, we will get back to that, uh, but this week, with the celebration of the baptism, I wanted to do a different message today. You never forget the day. It's a day when everything changes. For me, it was April 24th, 1999. That was the day that I was baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And a lot of people's ministry went into that baptism. If you had been there, you could have maybe congratulated Pastor Doug Batchelor, for it was his video ministry that woke up a wild, young college student years ago. If you had been there, you may have congratulated Pastor Jean Ross, for he was the pastor who studied with me for years as I wrestled with God, and he was the one who baptized me. But if those men were the only ones that you congratulated at my baptism, you would have missed, you would have overlooked others' very important ministries that helped change 
a rock and roll DJ into a believer in God. Who were those other people? You would have missed Jackie and her husband. Blessed with the gift of hospitality, they always made sure that the new guy felt welcome at church. Even with his long hair and leather coat, they were always welcoming. You would have missed, and you may not have noticed, my mother and father who spent years praying for their wayward son. You would have missed Pastor Jean's wife, Ruth, who opened up her house to me and let me come in and welcomed me there for Bible studies. And if you had just focused on those folks, if you had just focused on the pastors, you surely would have missed Marilyn Leonard, and you would have thought, forgot to congratulate her. Because Marilyn, she wasn't present that day of my baptism, at least not in the flesh. But without Marilyn and without women of faith like her, I may have never set foot in a baptistry, not just today, but ever. For Marilyn was one of my Sunday school teachers when I was a child. And every week, she and other church ladies taught this young boy about God and his love for sinners. Now, I did walk away from that teaching to my own folly in my youth years, but I believe it was in part because of the faithfulness and the giftedness of wise women like Marilyn Leonard that Jesus used that to prepare a foundation in me that one day he could use to call me back to him. So today I want to focus on those who do ministry, and yet many times we miss them. Many times we overlook them, and yet their ministry is so important. For my friends, it is the ministry of the many that makes a difference in changing a life. Can you say amen? amen. This is what we celebrate today as we celebrate Patricia's baptism. We celebrate all the people in her life that helped guide her today to choose to trust Jesus. We celebrate her husband who shared his Adventist faith with her. We celebrate Renee and Eula who led out on those weekly Bible studies and looking through the Thunder DVDs, sharing truth with her week by week. Today we celebrate the Sabbath school leaders who've created classrooms down there so that when Patricia brought her children and they attended those classrooms, when they were done, they said, Mom, we want to come back to that church. Because believe me, when a new family comes to church, if the kids go to Sabbath school and they're bored or they don't like it, that family's not coming back, right? So thank you to our Sabbath school leaders, to your assistants, to the greeters. We celebrate everyone at church who made this family feel the first time they came here like they came home. And that's what we want our church to be. But also today we celebrate because Patricia does not want to just be ministered to. She's told me time and again, she said, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of God's ministry leading other people to Christ. So another verse that she shared with me that had spoke to her heart was the beautiful verses in Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And I love this next part. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, why? For good works. We have been saved by grace, but we are created now for good works. So here's my question for you. This seems like an odd question, but from this verse, as you look at this verse, who is we? Does we mean everybody, or is we just a few people? Isn't it everybody, friends? It sounds like everybody to me. All are created by God to be used by him. And that thought goes hand in hand with what Peter wrote 
In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it says, As each one has received a gift, minister it one to another. So after baptism, the Holy Spirit gives gifts to believers. Have you found your gift? Or have you left it under a table somewhere unopened, the gift from the Spirit? Now, yet again, I got a silly question for you from that verse. Who is each? As each one, that's, it's just a few, right? Every other person sitting in the pew is each? Just people with long hair? No. People with short hair? No. People who wear ties? Is that the only eaches that we're talking about? I hope not. No, friends. Each. Doesn't each mean everyone in this verse? As each one or as anyone has received a gift, the Bible says then use it. It doesn't sound like only certain people receive gifts. And Paul agrees with Peter. He says the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Friends, it sounds like everyone, regardless of race or age or color of skin or nationality or gender, we all receive gifts from God for ministry. Amen? And I am thankful for all the people in my life who used their gifts that led me to baptism. And I'm also so grateful that Patricia has not only answered the call to be baptized, but she wants to be involved in ministry. She wants to be the woman that God created her to be. And God actually describes a woman like this in the Bible. And though we're not all women here today, I think we can learn from this proverb to wise women. So if you've got your Bibles, open it up to Proverbs chapter 31. That's the last proverb in the book of Proverbs, and I think it can speak something to each of us here today. This book ends with counsel to women. And I know what you're thinking. Maybe some of you are thinking, Pastor, this is, yeah, it's wisdom literature. The Bible calls it wisdom literature, but this is wisdom literature from thousands of years ago. This is written in a different culture. But friends, I believe that there are truths in God's Word that stand the test of time. Amen? And I believe that in God's Word, there are principles that transcend culture. So what counsel does Proverbs give to a woman today who wants to serve God? Proverbs 31, verse 12. And it says, speaking of her, the, the woman in conjunction with her husband says, she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. So it says that she seeks to be the best for her husband if she's married. Now, could we say that this counsel is only for married people? I don't think so. Because underlying that, the fact that she does good and not evil shows that she, right off the bat, is following God. Why do we say that? Because she's other-centered. She's focused on others. And that's what it means to follow God, does it not? And that's something that I think God wants both genders to be, yes? It's not just women He wants us to, just women to be other-centered, but I think He wants us guys as well to be other-centered and thinking of others. Amen, gentlemen? Okay, thank you. I want to make sure they didn't fall asleep on me. A wise woman cares for her home and she can have business outside the home if she chooses. Don't believe me? Let's read God's Word. Verse 15, she, do, she also rises while it is yet night. I love sharing that verse with my wife, <laughs> who is not the biggest fan of getting up in the morning. But that's what the Bible says. You can't argue with it. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. Look at verse 16. She considers a field and buys it. And from her profits, she plants a vineyard. Remember, friends, this wasn't written during a time of women's liberation. This was written 2,000 years ago. God liberated women long ago to be involved in business. That's what he's saying right here in this ancient book of wisdom. God says a woman can take care of her home, but if she feels blessed to do it, 
She can have business outside the home too. So how else is a wise woman described in God? Verse 20 says that she helps the needy. Again, is that something that only females should do? No, everybody should. But God's Word says that a wise woman will be thinking of others. And friends, isn't that the core of Christianity? It's one of the core truths is that we're loving our neighbors and helping them. This proverb goes on and says, a wise woman teaches wisdom to others and shows kindness. You say, wait a second. Hold up, pastor. You're telling me a woman can teach? Ladies, how about a chorus of amens there? Yes, I think so. Because if they can't, in my schooling years, both inside the church and outside the church, I was taught by some amazing women. Again, ladies, thank you. My goodness, I think they fell asleep, fellas. A woman can teach. And God said it. That's why I believe it. He said a wise woman does this. Look at verse 26. Follow me down. It says that she opens her mouth with wisdom. And on her tongue is the law of kindness. So she is sharing wisdom, not just possessing it, but she's sharing it and she's teaching it to others. Verse 28 and 29 says that her family praises God because of her. And this is where you can say, well, is it just about wives? No, because we all have families. And because of how we live in our connection with God, they can praise God because of who we are. And it says that a wise woman, her family praises God. But I want to stop for a second right here. Folks, this is a proverb, okay? It's describing the way life can be. But a proverb does not mean that it will be the way life is. A wife can do all the right things, and her husband can still choose to be a jerk, right? A husband can be committed and, and be loving, and a wife may still choose to be unfaithful. Parents can teach their children the right way to live for God, but they still have the choice to turn from God and that teaching. So please remember, Proverbs decla is declaring the way that life can be, the best way it can be. It's not dictating the way it has to be. We still have our choice in this. So as we come to the end of this proverb, I have a couple more odd questions to ask you today. First, ladies, I'm going to ask you. Ladies, females, women, both young and old, have you ever prayed to be more pretty? You don't have to raise your hand or anything, but I want you to think back on those years, even when you were maybe a teenager or young. Did you ever look in the mirror and thought, I wish I was prettier? Now, I know it's an odd question, but I have to ask because we as guys, we don't think like this, right, gentlemen? I mean, most guys look in the mirror, and we think we look better than we do, <laughs> right? Let's be honest, fellas, that's how we are. So I don't know. I'm not sure about the ladies, but I don't think they look in the mirror and they're not wired like we are. Ladies, have you longed to be more beautiful? And now, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you a question. Gentlemen, men, males, both young and old, have you ever asked God to send a beautiful woman your way? Hmm? Have you ever in your life wanted to have a knockout girl who was showing interest in you? I ask these questions to help us realize what we are looking for in life. What do we want versus what truly matters? Proverbs 31 verse 30 says, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. God says that beauty comes and beauty goes. And yet we, if we're honest with ourselves, we both, men and women in society, we've become obsessed with outer beauty sometimes. But what lasts? And what should we long for? The Bible says a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. 
God says it's not the outside that matters most, but it's the heart of a person, both men and women. It's the heart of a person that is turned to and focused on God. That is true beauty. And I'll admit it, when I was a young man, I was very happy, very happy to be surrounded by women who I thought were beautiful, but they were just pretty on the outside. The looks fade over time. And now today in my life, I want to be in the company of wise women who trust the Lord. Amen? I want to be in the company of wise men who want to be around wise women. Amen? Because beauty, true beauty, is on the inside. And ladies and fellows, too, if you look in the mirror and if you don't feel beautiful inside, it doesn't matter what you do on the outside. You won't truly feel beautiful until you come to God and realize He says to you, I made you, and you are beautiful. I want to be surrounded by men and women who are focused on the heart of things because with an army of strong and wise women, and with an army of strong and wise men as described in God's Word, we can change the world. Amen? Now, Patricia, I praise God for your decision to be baptized today. But I'm also so excited for your desire to be a wise woman for God. And I know the Lord will use you in mighty ways to bring others to Him. And I pray, friends, that we will all rise up as wise women and wise men who are willing to serve, to serve God and others. For that is how our amazing God changes the world, one life at a time. And friends, if you have not found your place in ministry yet, come and talk to one of us. Talk to the elders. Talk to the pastors. We will be happy to help you find your place in ministry and to use your gifts because Jesus brings about change in our world by using you, by using all of us. I still remember the lyrics of the song. After all the years, and after filling my head with so many rock and roll songs, the lyrics of this one simple song stuck in my head. We were doing family worship on a Friday night a few years back. We were singing all those kids' songs. We let the kids pick out the songs they want to sing, and so they were picking them all out. And then one came to mind, and I said, hey, guys, do you guys know the song, I Am a Promise? And both kids looked at me and said, no. I turned to Jeanette, and I said, I'm a promise, and she shook her head, bewildered. And I was shocked. I said, really? And then without thinking, I began to recite the words. They just flowed out. I didn't have to struggle for them. They were just there. I am a promise. I am a possibility. I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality. Oh, you know it. You should sing it along with me here. And I am learning to hear God's voice, and I am trying to make the right choice. Yes, I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be. I finished the song, and it struck me. I had not sung that song. I had not heard that song since I was a kid, and the lyrics were all still there. Those song lyrics were taught to me by Marilyn Leonard. She taught me that with God, I could be something. And what she taught stuck all those years later. So years later, because of the faithful ministry of a wise woman to just one young child, when everything in my head said, there is no way that you can be a pastor, it's impossible, I still got into my moving truck with my new bride, and we rolled down I-80 and we left the promised land of <laughs> Iowa. 
And we came to the mission field <laughs> in Nebraska. And because of the ministry of a wise woman, I found myself at Union College. Me, studying to be a pastor. And all of this happened in no small part because of the faithfulness and the ministry of a wise woman who got up each week and taught songs to little kids, taught songs to me about our risen Lord Jesus and what He could do with me. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank You for the ministry of those in the past that helped bring us to the place we're at today. And Lord, may we accept that wonderful truth that we can be that promise to be anything you want us to be. Lord, give us your vision at this time so that we may see things through your eyes and to see what you want each of us to be. Bless us with that vision, Lord, not just today, but every day so that we may follow you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now, wise men and women and wise children among us, stand with me, and let's sing our closing song of dedication, one of my favorites, Be Thou My Vision. Page 547 in your hymnal, if you want to follow along, or on the screen. Gracious Father in heaven, Lord, some of us very early on in life discover that our vision is not quite what it should be. And so we go to the eye doctor and we get these glasses that we put on. And some of us are blessed to have good eyesight for quite a while, but the older we get, eventually, we start to all be wearing glasses. Lord, each of us here, we need new glasses. We need a new vision to see the way you see to see what we can become in you. So, Lord, give us that wisdom to accept your vision. And, Lord, may we be willing to follow you wherever you guide us. Make us wise men 
Make us wise women and then help us to share the wisdom that you've given to us with others so that someone else may come to know that there's a God in heaven who loves them, who saves, and who is coming soon. In Jesus' name we pray. And all those who want God's vision said, amen. amen. God bless each and every one of you. Have a happy Sabbath.